All right, today I want to talk to you about two of my favorite things, dead compressors and multimeters. More specifically, let's just talk about the multimeter first. On your multimeter, you might have noticed you had this little setting over here off to the side that looks like a horseshoe and a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, these actually are not either one of those things. Actually, one is continuity and one is resistance. And these modes are actually different. So let's dive into those modes really quick. Continuity is designed on your multimeter for checking electrical circuits that are supposed to be connected. It also has this beautiful tone that they also call the ring function for the tone that you can hear now. Now, continuity can be used for a lot of things, but the best example that I have is a light switch. A light switch is supposed to be connected in circuit whenever it's activated. And so what you would do is you would check the base of the switch and the top of the switch. And again, you would hear this tone when it's on and this tone when it's off. Again, we are measuring the flow of electrons from the bottom of the switch to the top of the switch. That is what continuity is designed for. Another great example of this is fuses, right? Electrical fuses. When we take our meter leads and you place one at the top of the fuse and one at the bottom of the fuse, you'll find that you get a beep. If the fuse has failed and is bad, you will get no beep. Again, our multimeters are sending electrons from this point to this point. And when that resistance is low enough, and the electrons flow freely, we get the beep, right? Everybody loves the beep. So let's talk over now, switching from that mode over to resistance. When we talk about resistance, resistance is this giant scale of ohms, right? We measure resistance using ohms. And that scale looks like this. It is zero ohms all the way to 700 million ohms. Now, that range of ohms is gonna depend on the exact meter that you're using and what it can measure because this range is not normal for all meters. Some are only in the lower range and have a limited capacity. Again, you would reference the spec uh, specifications for that specific meter to find what those numbers are. But for the mere sake of talking about continuity and resistance, you have this range from zero to 700 million ohms. We also call that 700 mega ohms. See, resistance is designed to measure things like temperature thermistors, right? We call those 10 K ohm thermistors, 20 K ohm thermistors, and even 200 K ohm thermistors. That name, 10 K ohm, is, is literally 10,000 ohms of resistance at a specific temperature. Most all thermistors here in the United States market, a 10 K ohm thermistor is rated at 10,000 ohms at 76.5 degrees. The same with a 20 K ohm thermistor. It is 20,000 ohms at 76.5 degrees. And the same for 200 K ohms at that same exact temperature. This allows us to go out in the field and troubleshoot thermistors to see, hey, if this is at 76.5 degrees, it should read that exact resistance using resistance, not continuity. Now, you see that we kind of share the same function on the dial here for both of these modes, but they're completely different. And I'm gonna show you exactly how and why that is. So what we have our meter set to right now is continuity. and so. Let's shift gears and go over to dead compressors. Now, here I have two compressors that we're going to check electrically to see if they are grounded. So I'm gonna take my negative meter lead or my black meter lead and I'm going to put it on a unpainted sanded surface, right? Right now it's the copper stub of this compressor. Why is it important that we use it on an unpainted surface? That's because when we're measuring resistance or even the flow of electrons between point A and point B, we want to ensure that there is no impedance between the two. If I go on a painted surface, it's coated with an enamel and a paint. Same with a sticker. I'm going to get a faulty reading between the two and not get an accurate number. So again, I set it at the top here and then I go from winding, right, to winding, to winding. Oh, what a glorious sound as a technician. This tells me that my compressor is grounded. That means I have electrons that are flowing from motor windings to the actual shell casing of this compressor. So much so that it's 30 ohms between the two. This compressor has failed. Now let's jump over to this other compressor. I'm gonna do the same thing and check in the same spots as you should. And with that, I am gonna get no satisfactory beep and also it says OL. Now, if I was out in the field and it's a Friday and uh, man, I really gotta get going. I've got one bad compressor and this one's good, but the joke's on you because they're actually both bad. There's a reason we don't use continuity for checking bad compressors, and I'm gonna show you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch this mode over to 
ohms, more specifically in the auto range. Now, if I check this compressor, I'm gonna get 30 ohms, right? And in continuity, it beeps. Now, if I jump over here to my other compressor that did not beep and also said OL, what is my actual resistance reading? It's 1.7 kilo ohms. Now, the K in kilo ohms stands for thousands. So this is actually 1,700 ohms. Copeland and Daikin, both manufacturers of compressors, state that anything less than 1 million ohms or 1 mega ohm is a failed compressor. 1,700 ohms is less than 1 million ohms. So this is also a grounded compressor. Now we know that continuity is not a great test for grounded compressors, and we know that resistance is always the test that we should be, we should be using on this. And you would say, okay, well, tell me more about continuity because this is the mode that I've always used to check grounded circuits. And let's actually test it. So here I have a decade box. A decade box is a box that is filled with resistors underneath that go to little toggle switches that allow me to test electrical circuits to find out failure points, to trick thermistors into thinking that they're actually reading their values, um, and lots of other fun stuff. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to add resistance to the circuit and take away the beep. Now, if we look at our meter here, we'll see that it reads 73 ohms, but it doesn't beep, right? Where does that fall on the scale? And if I take my marker here and I show you, so if we're talking continuity and we're going from zero, how far until it beeps and reads? And again, right, that's gonna vary based upon the actual meter that you're using. But this is why we don't use continuity for checking to ground or electrical circuits. Because look, this is our range of resistance that we can check with our multimeter. This is the range that continuity actually checks resistance in the circuits that we're looking at. So when we are actually looking for failed wires, ground shorts, ground faults, failed inverter boards, failed compressors, motor windings, things that are not supposed to be connected electrically, we should be checking in resistance, not continuity. Continuity has a purpose, and that's, again, checking electrical circuits that should be connected, not resistance, which is checking things that are not connected or not supposed to be connected. Right? That's the difference between the two. All right, that's it. See you on the next tech tip. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.